One of the five types of errors in root cause analysis is measurement. And so gauge R and R is used in manufacturing to assist in determining whether there are problems in your measurement system. And it's pretty simple. You need uh, at least two appraisers here. And you need ten parts, usually measured at least two times, maybe three, maybe more. Uh, and in this case, we're using Ford data. There's actually uh, three appraisers and ten parts and th three trials. So in the QI macros, simply click on DFSS, gauge r and R. Choose the gauge r and R form to get a blank form. Here you can see our blank form. It's ready to go. And if you open up <coughs> in the QI macros, you will actually find our AIAG SPC data. And here you'll find our Ford data. So we're just going to take and uh, copy this. And we're going to switch back over and paste that into our spreadsheet. <clears throat> and right here you'll also notice uh, that we have a specification tolerance of 2, and we're going to use that as well. Because the gauge r and R worksheet has three different ways of measuring uh, gauge R and R. So here we have our appraisers and again you normally you would just choose different put these in random order and let people test them with the same gauge. And we're going to scroll on down here and here you can see we can put in our spec tolerance which is 2. Now the thing you want to look at first is NDC. This is the number of distinct categories. That means do you have enough part variation to get an appropriate gauge reading. A lot of people, you know, measure identical parts and wonder why they can't get a good gauge R and R. You need bad parts to do a good gauge R and R. So your NDC should be at least five. All right. Now, if we look at it, there's a number of ways to do this. One's called the average and range method, which is right here. And so the average and range method says equipment variation is nine percent, appraiser variation is five percent. So the equipment is actually a little bit dicier than the appraisers are, and our overall gauge R&R &R is slightly above 10%. And what this says is that if our percent R&R &R is greater than 10%, it may be acceptable based on uh, whatever. Or you may need to tune up your gauge for maintenance and redesign, better clamping or something of that nature. Another method is called specification tolerance. Here you can see our spec tolerance, and it's calculating that percent R and R using spec tolerance is actually acceptable. Now in the Automotive Industry Action Group you can use either one of these two things and again it depends on your uh, customer. So there's total, that's actually using the average and range method, there's the spec tolerance method. Now if we scroll down a little bit more you're going to find the ANOVA method. So here's our total variation right here without interaction between uh, issues and with interaction. But if you look closely, you'll notice all of these are in the green, which means they're all under 10%. So I would say that our gauge using spec tolerance and using the average and uh, the ANOVA method shows that yeah, our gauge system is acceptable. So we're doing an appropriate job of measurement. And that's how easy it can be to do a gauge R&R study using the QI macros and choose which one of these methods is right for you and confirm it with your customer. Make sure you have an NDC of at least 5, in this case 14, and you'll get the right answer. And if you look over at our Ford data, you'll actually see that it, all of these actually match the results that are obtained in the QI macros. So that's how easy it can be to do gauge R&R &R to determine that your measurement system is working appropriately and is not a big source of error.